Hey, this is Dr. Tom Rogers uh, with Performance Medicine talking today about men's health. This is Men's Health Month. It's June, and um, each week I want to speak specifically to the men. And hopefully the women will be listening too since it's the women that get the men in to see the doctor um, or at least encourage them with their health. But in any event, um, today I want to talk about belly fat in men. Now, again, a lot of this applies to women too, but there are more obese men with belly fat than women. And in men, it particularly goes to their abdominal area, which is worse than going to the hips or legs or butt like it does more so often in women. When women start getting belly fat, that's a problem. And a lot of times they do because they go into menopause and they become more like men. That's why the women need to look at the hormones. Anyway, as that's an as aside, getting back to men with belly fat. You know, through the years, um, this country has really been misguided with dietary recommendations. Um, as we've talked about many times, um, that food pyramid that we used to follow was the exact wrong thing to do. Today we would follow an inverse food pyramid where we would eat low carbs, moderate protein, and high fat, not low fat. When our country started getting fat, two-thirds of us are obese, um, that's when we gave the recommendations to get on a low-fat diet. Here it is 30, 40 years later. Um, a lot more people are obese because of those wrong guidelines. So you got to understand the science with medicine is continually evolving, and it changes. And a lot of what we know today uh, was wrong a year ago or five years ago, etc. But anyway, let's focus on belly fat in men. And I can speak to this personally because um, as you get older, the fat you accumulate is going to go to your midsection. Um, I've always been a thin person. But at one point in my life, this was a few short years ago, I've always been, a, I'm six foot one, 168 pounds. So that's, that's not obese by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, most people think I'm underweight, which I'm really not. But anyway, um, I started noticing that my size 31 pants were fitting snug around the middle. And I thought, you know, I'll weigh the same thing. What's going on here? I'm starting to get a little bit of belly fat. So I got real interested in why this was happening to me. And I changed a lot of things about the way I did things. And I have a good scientific explanation for why it occurred. And I'm going to tell you about it. Because I really didn't weigh anything. I was becoming what I would call a skinny fat man, which is actually worse than being a fat fat man. Because of metabolism, people that are obese that have belly fat are a little bit more acclimated to it. But a thin person that starts getting belly fat, um, their metabolism can't handle it. And they're more likely to get metabolic syndrome with all the bad consequences that come with that. Um, but I tried to think of what I was doing different. Number one, I'd hurt my back, so I wasn't lifting weights quite as much. Um, two, I was stressed probably because of that. If you don't get exercise, you get stressed. Three, I wasn't sleeping well. Um, so I'm sure my cortisol levels were high. And as you know, cortisol um, is a... It's a hormone that they call it the stress hormone. Actually, it, um, it really puts weight on you. It's like taking prednisone. It makes you puffy. It tells your body you're in a state of stress. So your body tries to preserve fat so that it can survive. Um, so, and also, I really wasn't looking as much at my carbs. You know, I've got a little bit of a sweet tooth anyway, so I found myself through comfort eating or stress eating or whatever, you know, I would grab a donut occasionally or, you know, a cookie. And I wasn't real strict about what I was eating because I'd always been able to get by with, you know, eating most anything I wanted. So at some point in your life, things begin to change. Some people later than others, uh, a lot of people struggle with it their whole life either through genetics or what they were fed 
when they were in the womb. I mean, that makes a, a big difference. What your mom ate when you she was pregnant with you can set you up for a lifetime of struggling with your weight. And one thing I always tell my patients, life is not fair. So what you have to do is figure it out and work within your own parameters. But so belly fat, that fat that goes to your midsection, um, how do you get rid of it? Well, there's a, there's a lot of ways, but you have to look at it scientifically because this is definitely a metabolic problem. It's, if you think it's a problem of you know, being lazy or um, you know, slothfulness or really sometimes even overeating and not exercising enough, it's really not. It's a metabolic thing. And when I realized this, I looked at people differently. You know, before before then, I was re- when I was uneducated about, even though I was a doctor, about obesity. You know, I used to think that that 300-pound patient walking into my office uh, was was lazy, eating wrong, and you know it was their fault. But really, it's not. It's it's a metabolic problem that has a lot of. Um, of not only consequences it's got a lot of reasons and it's a tough problem to solve that's why i do everything i can to learn about it and to try to help you get lean and lose weight especially belly fat now i'm signaling out belly fat because that's the worst kind of fat um like i told you a skinny fat man is worse than a fat fat man um but belly fat's particularly bad because it's visceral fat and that's the type of fat that not only leads to metabolic syndrome with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and then diabetes, and that's the key to it. Um, that fat accumulates on your organs on the inside. So you may not even be able to see it on, on the outside of a person, but on the inside, their liver is getting fat, which can lead to cirrhosis, the second common cause behind alcohol. Um, also, also, you'll fe- see fatty streaks on their heart. They begin to develop coronary artery disease. Same thing with kidneys. And it creates an inflammatory extra organ, really. And as you know, inflammation causes all disease. It's the root cause of all diseases. So it's an inflammatory thing, belly fat. The fat on your legs or your butt or your shoulders, they don't act like that. So it's a totally different thing. And a lot of it has to do with how your body partitions uh, fat. You know, it can either go for energy or it can go for fat storage. And the reason or the shifts, the reason it can go to one or the other is because of hormones. And those hormones, number one, insulin. Number two, cortisol. Number three, lipase. Number four, testosterone number five estrogen so that's what makes it hard the older you get and that's why you rarely see people in menopause or andropause that don't have some belly fat on them so they have to do better Uh, they have to figure it out metabolically and hormonally that's think of testosterone um, as an anabolic steroid which it is it builds muscle which burns fat um, same thing with estrogen for women. Um, and in men, estrogen, you have to keep an eye on that because it can cause a problem down the line. That's one reason when you do hormones, you really have to know what you're doing with this. Um, cortisol has the exact opposite effect. Um, it tells your body to store fat and it does not give you energy. It sucks energy up from you. So, um, so the main thing I always talk about with people, and we've made a lot of develops, de- developments, we're able to help a lot of people with this now, is insulin. Now, of course, I know a lot about insulin because I've raised two diabetic kids who have to have insulin every day multiple times and in order to survive. Type 2 diabetes, which is 95% of diabetics, and which most people that have this don't even know they have it, but they're at least insulin resistant, which leads to type 2 diabetes, which um, really you see more in obese people, particularly those people with belly fat. So you have to look at insulin. 
So the first thing you have to do is, of course, look at what you eat. Um, it's got to be low carb. And you have to cut out the, the carbs that are simple carbs, of course, like sugar and fructose. Remember, fructose, which I want to do a podcast on in itself, is a lot worse than glucose. Um, it's, it, and when you think of fructose, you think of fruit. And that's what I'm talking about. Fruit can be very bad for you. It also has a great amount of vitamins, fiber, etc., phytonutrients. Um, so it has a lot of pluses. But it also, if you have a problem with it, it really makes people fat. That's why when animals that hibernate, like bears and other kinds of, of animals, they eat a ton of fruit very quickly to get rid, ready for the winter. And that's why they get fat. They eat a ton of fruit. So, and that's where high fructose corn syrup comes from. One of the most lethal things you could eat regarding your health. Um, so you have to be careful. They put it in everything nowadays. So fructose is bad. But getting back to carbohydrates. In my experience with, as a weight loss physician, carbohydrates are really where it's at. That's what leads to insulin resistance. In other words, your insulin won't work for you. So you get higher and higher amounts of insulin to keep your blood sugar normal. And insulin is a fat-storing hormone. It also is a hunger hormone. It makes you hungry. So you have to look at those insulin resistance numbers, which I look at all the time. As a matter of fact, when I see a new patient for weight loss, I always look at their insulin level. I'm looking at their sugar too, but I'm really more interested in that insulin level. And I can do something about it with Number one, a low-carbohydrate diet. Um, and two, there's medications that um, can help this. I've talked many times about metformin or berberine, um, some of the GLP-1 medicines uh, like Ozempic, Victoza, Saxenda, Trulicity. There, there's a bunch of them, but, um, and I do have my favorites, but... Um, these are medicines that really help you overcome that insulin resistance and helps you overcome this metabolic syndrome. Um, it's really interesting about how this, these things all work together. Even when you eat too much salt and don't hydrate enough with water, um, salt can be okay, even good. But if you don't drink enough water with that, that salt can raise your blood sugar. Um, so that's an interesting fact a lot of people don't know about. That's one reason salt's been implicated in a lot of heart disease and metabolic syndrome. So I look at the, I look at the carbs. I look at the other hormones like cortisol, testosterone, um, estradiol, and we formulate a plan because it's really important. And especially to men because, you know, men they drink a lot of beer and... And I'll tell you, the low-carb beers aren't so bad if you really need to drink beer. Uh, the IPAs and some of that, it can be really fattening for you. But um, you have to look at that. And, and men also need to lift a little bit of weights. Because remember, muscle burns fat for 24 to 48 hours after you lift. When you do cardio, um, you know, about... An hour after you finish, your body's back to its basic metabolism. So you have to put some kind of resistance exercise in there. Um, and some other things I did that are useful um, to get rid of, rid of belly fat um, is fasting. I learned uh, to do some fasting. Intermittent fasting, which is generally where you eat your meals within, usually two meals, within eight hours in that window and then you're not eating anything for 16 hours this is a good way to burn belly fat another thing is every week or two um, or as often as you want to do it do a 24 hour fast or it may be even a little bit longer I mean fasting is a very safe thing to do it's not nearly as hard as I thought it was but that's been a good trick for me to um, get rid of belly fat and get back down to my normal waist size because I was watching my body fat percentage go up. I was actually watching my metabolic parameters and my insulin level was going higher. My A1C was going higher. Even my cholesterol was going higher. Uh, my blood pressure was easing up a little bit. So, you know, as you get older, these things, you have to start looking at them. 
And you need to look, take them very seriously because, you know, heart disease is what's going to get most of us anyway. And you don't want to, you don't want that to happen to you when it's preventable. So look at what you eat, do some fasting, at least some intermittent fasting, check your hormones out, do the right type of exercise. You ever notice that the people in the gym that get on the treadmill for an hour every day at a slow pace, they read a book while they do it, their body never changes. You know, the people that's bodies change go to the weight room. They do some kind of resistance exercising. And they use a little HIT training, which is high intensity uh, interval training. It doesn't take as long. Um, muscle burns fat. Muscle builds bone. So a lot of it's about muscle. And as men, you know, we definitely want muscle. Um, as you get older, you tend to lose a lot of your muscles, especially around your lower extremities. And you can almost tell uh, what's happening to a man by looking at his body. They start to get a little estrogenic, a little gyno, and that's which is a hormonal thing. So think about your hormones. Uh, think about your carbs. Think about your fasting, your sleep, your stress levels. And let us at Performance Medicine try to help you figure this out because it is complex. And let us give you the tools that can help you with that. So this is Father's Day week. Uh, we're running a lot of specials this week for men. Uh, go to the website, performancemedicine.net. Look at our Father's Day specials. There's a lot of them in there. And we, we hope we can get you on the right track to being healthy. Um, thank you. We'll see you next week. <music>